Hello, I'm at GuffmanHouse.com, and this is Jason Henderson from Burton Snowboards. How are you doing, Jason? It's spectacular. And this is Coffee Talk Hour, and Jason is walking us through. Sure. Hey, yeah. hey, Jason is walking us through See, the. We're 2000. drinking at five o'clock. That's right. Ah, uh, so good. Mm. Uh, Jason is walking us walking through the 2019 line, and we're into boots. Uh, kind of the entry price point and entry beginner level and skill uh, boots from Burton. We have the Invader and then the Moto series. Mm -hmm. Awesome boots, best-selling boot in the world, right? Uh, yeah, Moto's yeah. been the best-selling boot in the industry for you know since its inception. You know, <laughs> yeah, long time ago. Yeah, almost twenty years ago, but it's right. a, you know, killer boot for the price. So, mm -hmm. so but uh, this is this is kind of like where it all starts for a lot of people. It gets people on snow riding, and for people who are intermediate to advanced, um, they can they can like move up from this boot or even stay on the moto if they like a little bit softer of a boot. So Jason, what can you tell us about kind of like where it all starts? Well, I mean, just boots in general, like is, you know, it's definitely not the most glamorous part of your gear, but it is the most important part yeah. of your gear. Um, if you're working on a budget, you know, I'd say spend more money on boots and then maybe less on bindings. Right. Would your, you'd be definitely better off you know, in the, in the long run, having a really good fitting pair of boots. Mm -hmm. um, the, the benefits of that is you get something that fits right. Um, you're not, you know, you have a lot better heel hold. You know, you have less foot pain, mm -hmm. um, you know, because you're not cranking your straps down to try to, you know, make up from that sloppy fit or, <laughs> or whatever. So yeah, having, been there. Yeah, and a lot, a lot of little details, you know, that, uh, you know, Bert has learned over the years and, you know, mm -hmm thousands of hours of R&D, you know, things like that, you know, that really, you know, make a difference as, as far mm -hmm. as how the boots fit. And even on just our base model, the Invader, um, just a traditional lace, which, you know, a lot of people actually still really like. There's nothing wrong with it. People have been lacing their boots for hundreds of years <laughs> now. It seems it works. <laughs> right. um, but, uh, you know, some things that's kind of consistent throughout the line that we have on even our base model Invader is that uh, we do one-to-one -one lasting, mm -hmm. which means for every hole and half size, we make a separate uh, shell size, uh, outsole, and a separate tongue size. A separate tongue size too. Yeah. So it's all it all matches up really well. Wow. So like when you're getting a nine and a half in our boot, you're getting a nine and a half liner, nine and a half shell, nine and a half tongue, and nine and a half outsole. Wow. Um, so what that does is it you know basically it's uh, it's something that you know. Some companies might do to save like money because of tooling costs and mm -hmm. things like that, where you might get a nine and a half in their boot and you're getting a size ten, you know, everything else. You know. Right. Um, so that just creates, you know, more overall length, you know, more room for the liner to pack out, you know, whatever mm -hmm. issues that, that might bring up. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, we do it because it's definitely it it, uh, it fits better and also, you know, toe drag is a big thing. You know, you want to make sure yep. you have the shortest overall boot and they do what they call shrinkage footprint where they're really trying to shave the overall uh, mm -hmm. material toe and heel and right. just trying to really reduce, you know, you look at our soles, they're very thin, very low profile. Mm -hmm. um, we just don't want any extra stuff hanging out there, you know, getting caught in the snow, things like that. Right. So and Burton, Burton has always done a great job at that, you know, with a size, let's say this is actually a you know, size 11 yeah. Invader. It has an imprint on, on the snow of a size 10. Um, right. uh, traditionally, of, a, of an old, you know, like right. from back in the day, but right. yeah, now things are just kind of <laughs> caught right. up now. It's right. eleven, but yep. you know, like before, you know, before we introduced shrinkage footprint, there was no way you were getting an eleven into a medium. Now no there's way. now you can get an eleven into a medium. I do that. So, yep. um, mm -hmm. and even on a regular with board, too, yeah. like a size eleven. Yeah, no, it's uh, having that. You know, it it kind of opens up board options. You know, if you're on that ten and a half, eleven borderline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah, you can ride a wide board, but you right. don't have to. That's right. Yeah, you know, so mm -hmm. it's kind of fun to look at these uh, on these three boots. The Invader that kind of you know starts it um, has lace. Then we have a speed zone. And then we have uh, Boa. Yeah. All three kind of lacing options that Burton has to offer. Yeah. So um, going up from so all these have the so the the back to the Invader does have the imprint one liner, which mm -hmm. is heat moldable. Yep. It will. Um, either mold to the shape of your uh, foot with your body heat over time, or um, go to your local shop or you know, have, them, uh, have them mold them for you. Mm -hmm. So it uh, takes a little bit of the breaking process out of it, but it's not 100% necessary. Like, right. you know, me personally, I don't typically do that. I, you just, don't, you I, don't I, I, just, I just like to let my let foot do it, yeah. Right. But 
um, you know, it's always a it's always a good uh, thing to go to the shop and have them fit you. You know, they can they might have some tricks up their sleeves that they can mm-hmm. you know, make it fit better for you. But uh, yep. but you know, heat moldable uh, does have these uh, we call them power panels here. What that does is actually over time it actually keeps the shape of the heel cup. We put these little panels in there. Right. Um, you know, the liner is kind of the lifeblood of the boot. So whenever you're looking at buying a boot, you know, pull, pull the, the liner pull out. Pull the liner out. Check it out. You know, there's a lot of this extra webbing that when you pull it in, it pulls all around your ankle. It gives you a better heel hold. Mm-hmm. Um, even like a little nicer footbed. A lot of companies cut corners here too. But, you know, this is the platform that you stand on. You know, and having something with some good shape to it that's going to give you good arch support. Mm-hmm. It's going to cradle your heel really well. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it... Basically, it keeps your foot from distorting when you're cranking down your straps. Right. And that's where, um, you know, your bones and your feet start uh, collapsing. And that's where, you know, foot pain comes from mm-hmm. and things like that. So even just in our, you know, base model, we, you know, give you a decent foot bed. That's right. Yeah, you'll find, you'll find quite a few boots out there. Mm-hmm. The entry, entry models are just like flat. Nothing, yeah. Cookie cutter EVA. Yeah. So, right. it's, yeah. Uh, like I said, it's, it's those little things that actually mm-hmm. kind of add up to, you know, to... To add up to the sum that makes it good. So, <laughs> and then uh, then there's uh, moving into that. Yep, so then you go to the moto. Great, so, this is a great colorway. You you pointed yeah, that. Yeah, I like this color. It's this a good, is a good green. Yep, it's a good green. So, um, but you go to the moto. Uh, the moto is uh, available in two options. So you do get the speed zone, mm-hmm. uh, which is kind of our proprietary uh, lacing system yep. uh, that we developed years ago. Um, and then we also do offer the boa. And is that a, a single boa? Yep, just a single, uh, single zone boa. Got it. And this is a dual bone speed zone. So that's kind of the, the that's kind of the benefit of speed zone mm-hmm. is that you can operate the top and the bottom separately. Mm-hmm. So independent of each other, it kind of wraps around your foot, gives you a better uh, overall fit. Great. Um, versus you know the single zone, but you know they've got these things you know with the uh, especially with the new tongue you know or the newer tongue I should mm-hmm. say uh, being one to one. It just wraps really well, anyway. Right. Um, and then the re- we use the coiler in our in our right. boas, so mm-hmm. it it fits and works really well. That's right. Um, another thing that we do with boa that's different is um, we don't use steel cables. Mm-hmm. We use New England ropes. Mm-hmm. That's the company that we've been using uh, to make our speed zone for years, and they right. can make basically any um, any like rope for any condition, so right. or for any application. So what we just found is that you know by using New England ropes is it actually it does have a little bit of give to it mm-hmm. so it has a more natural flex to it where steel just does not and it's really hard on the rest of the boot you know we don't mm-hmm. and since it's nylon um, it's okay if the laces touch each other or touch the tongue it's you don't have to have these weird like plastic bumps and separators and right it's and not that. as abrasive as steel yeah it's just not as, not as abrasive right. so it works really well so mm-hmm. and lifetime warranty on all of our lacing systems I mean, okay so. On all the lacing systems, speed zone, yep. traditional lacing, yep. awesome. So. Cool. And now this is a this is an imprint one plus line that's found in the moto. It's a little bit different aesthetically. Uh, uh, from, from this distance, you know, they probably can't really see it, but right. uh, what the one plus is, it does have the same footbed, uh, mm-hmm. still heat moldable, but they just added a little bit more EVA uh, to okay. the top part, mm-hmm. um, and then a little bit uh, a little bit fuzzier, kind of uh, faux fur there, a little teddy bear fur. So it's right. kind of. Um, just to make it actually um, mold around different shapes of calves and just be, you know, overall a little bit more comfortable. Got it. And, uh, you know, these, all the boots are, are really lightweight, and mm-hmm. there's there's basically no rubber on the bottom. Is no, that right? on these, it's the Dynolite soles, what we call it. It's just that kind of rubberized EVA, just yep. to really cut down the weight, because, you know, rubber is the heaviest component of a boot. So, That's right. Um, you know, we do still have a little bit, you know, in the arch there to keep the keep the shape of the right. shape of the boot. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a good good looking lineup to like really start it off for a lot of people who are just getting into riding or maybe have a couple seasons under mm-hmm. their belts. And they have the ability uh, to have different lacing options, uh, traditional, speed zone, and bow within yep. these kind of entry mm-hmm. price points, along with uh, one-to-one lasting shrinkage footprint reduction mm-hmm. technology, and then the Dynolite outsole. Like, that's a pretty good run of boots for anyone just learning to yeah. ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah, beginner, right. intermediate, I mean, right. that's, that's the... If the shoe fits, where? <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome, uh, Jason. Man, thanks so much for being yeah. here again. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you guys for being here and watching. Leave a comment or a question. Let us know if you've ever ridden any of these boots and what you think of them. Subscribe to the channel right there. Check out more vids there. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you guys on snow. Peace.